Good morning everybody, good morning, it's JPR, and welcome back to another video. While most Pokemon games have the same basic structure that involves setting off on a journey, building a capable team, defeating a group of villains, and becoming the regional champion, sometimes there are some things that you're allowed to do on the side. These side events or competitions typically don't revolve around battling Pokemon, but expressing their strengths in differing ways, all while adding to each region's distinct flavor. Former director Jinichi Masuda once stated that activities and features like this help to make every entry in the Pokemon series feel a bit more unique. <clears throat> Fortunately, this was his response as to why trainer customization was cut out of Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire because it was a feature distinctive to the Kalos region. Yes, I'll take quotes that haven't aged well for 500, Alex. These notable side competitions first popped up in Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire in the form of Pokemon Contests, a competition where your Pokemon's appeal is judged based off their physical condition and their performance with moves. There are five different categories of contest, cool, tough, smart, cute, and beauty. So it's up to the coordinator to decide which category their Pokemon will shine brightest in. I liked how this added a further layer of customization to your Pokemon, as you can feed them Pokeblocks to increase their stats, or have distinct move pools built purely for performing in contests. Making Pokeblock was like another mini-game on its own, since you had to precisely time when the blender would pass you by, and you could even do this with friends through the Game Boy Link cable. Pokeblocks even had uses outside of contests, as they could be used as bait in the Safari Zone and be placed to attract Pokemon with certain natures. Speaking of customization, every time you win one of these contests, your Pokemon is rewarded with a special ribbon. There are four ranks in each category, making for a total of 20 different ribbons to collect, and you can stack multiple ribbons on one Pokemon if you're willing to go through the effort of constantly changing its moves around. It's amazing to me how many people value these ribbons. I mean, they don't do anything in battle, but they're a great way to mark a particularly sentimental Pokemon. I think that alone may be why contests were loved by the general audience. It allowed them to show affection towards their favorite Pokemon in ways other than just battling. Even if the ribbons have no special perks, a Pokemon just feels special with them on. My favorite thing about contests was doing them when I arrived in each new city that had them, so it really felt like I was building towards two different goals, similar to how Ash and May did in their travels throughout Hoenn. Unfortunately, this is my one and only strike against Pokemon Emerald, since all but one of the contest halls get replaced with battle tents. Why there had to be three of them, I'll never know. If you win one of the Master Rank contests with a score of 800 or better, then your Pokemon will be displayed as a painting in the Lily Cove Museum. You'll also obtain the Glass Ornament Decoration for your secret base if you win the Master Rank contest in every class. Not only could you use this to show off to your friends how much effort you put into contests, but it was also neat just to have some sort of in-game recognizability. It really made it feel as though you were becoming a real contest star. Furthermore, as a fun little easter egg, Jasmine, Whitney, and Price can all be spotted in the audiences of Pokemon contests. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. They came all the way from Johto to watch contests, yet they couldn't reserve three seats next to each other. What a darn shame. I only thought it's worth mentioning because this is the only time a character from a previous generation appears in the Hoenn region. In fact, Hoenn and Galar are the only two regions where a character from a previous generation doesn't have any kind of notable role. Not counting Oras, obviously, where Looker makes a brief appearance at the Battle Resort. While Whitney and Price eventually grew out of their contest phases, Jasmine will stick around in the audience of the Sinnoh Region Super Contest, which is a great segue into our next topic. So, Super Contests. What's so super about them? They dance now. That's about it. Okay, okay, I lied. You can dress your Pokemon up during the appeal round now to net some extra points from the crowd on top of the stats that you've already raised. Stats and raising them is largely the same as it was in the Hoenn games, except Pokeblocks have been replaced by Poffins, which once again comes with its own minigame attached. This time you'd have to use the Nintendo DS's stylus to mix the Poffin batter in the appropriate direction and speed. Move aside, Cooking Mama and Gordon Ramsay, there's a new head chef in town, and his name is me. Aside from that, contests play out almost exactly the same as they did before, but the neat part is that after you beat the Elite Four and challenge the Master Rank, you could compete against some notable NPCs including Fantina, Jasmine, the player's mom Johanna, and Casey, aka the Pokemon Center Nurse. So even if you had already gathered all the ribbons beforehand, there was still an incentive to go back and try it again, just to see what these coordinators were made of. Now, at first I wasn't going to mention the Underground as a side event, since it's a tad bit different from contests and the like, but I know all kinds of people would ask about it, since it technically is a side event with mini-games included, so let's get into it. The Underground is pretty neat, it truly was the first area that you could openly explore with your friends in real time. 
You can build secret bases, trade with fellow people in the mines, get caught in traps, and most importantly, mine for valuable materials such as spheres, fossils, heart scales, and even evolution stones. Although you couldn't really make a career out of mining in the underground, unlike contests. Well, unless you were Rourke or Byron. I still found it to be one of the greatest multiplayer features any Pokemon game has ever had. It even added some value to areas that you normally wouldn't revisit like Celestic Town and Full Moon Island since certain areas of the underground couldn't be accessed unless you dug down from those specific locations. Heart Gold and Soul Silver would be the next games to add to the list of side events with the inclusion of the brand new Pokeathlon Dome. This is easily the one side feature that I dumped the most time into. Pokeathlon was incredible. With 10 different events, 5 different courses, and 3 Pokemon to utilize all at once, this felt pretty dang close to the Pokemon Olympics. Similar to contests, there were 5 stats that you had to manage, this time between speed, power, skill, stamina, and jump. I know these sound more like Monado arts than Pokemon stats, but bear with me. Like with Pokeblocks and Poffins before it, this time Aper Juice blended from Apricorns could be used to manipulate these stats. But an added twist was that these stats could also be increased or decreased every day depending on their specific nature. Sure, it could be an inconvenience, but hey, it makes sense. Some days I wake up and I don't feel like running either. And by that, I mean every day. And naturally, no Pokemon excels in every category, so it's best to tailor your team's strengths to the specific course that you're playing on. The only exceptions to this rule are Mew, Ditto, Giratina Origin Form, Arceus, and ironically enough, Sunkern, the weakest Pokemon at the time. These five were the only Pokemon capable of reaching five stars in all five categories. That's right, this little guy is the Pokemon equivalent of Michael Phelps fused with Usain Bolt. A true freak of nature. Once you've fulfilled certain criteria like winning on every course or setting records in all 10 events, you get access more of the trophy rooms in the Pokeathlon Dome basement. When you finally complete all these challenges, you can access the Friendship Room, which contains gold statues of the player and their three Pokemon of choice. All while you can review your many accomplishments along the way in a similar vein to the museum pieces from Ruby and Sapphire. The Pokeathlon even fulfills the role of the Sinnoh Underground in a way, as you can cash in your athlete points for various evolution items and other useful materials. We've already discussed before how much of a hassle it was to obtain these items in the original Johto games, so the Pokeathlon plays an important role when it comes to team building in the remakes. The Unova region at first didn't have a ton to offer in terms of side events, really just Pokemon musicals in Nimbasa City, which followed up on the ability to dress up your Pokemon introduced in Diamond and Pearl, but beyond that didn't lead to anything expansive. Though I suppose the intro link could be seen as this generation's main feature, where you could visit other players' home worlds and partake in various missions for rewards. This feature could also be used to visit the Pokemon Dream World, where you could catch Pokemon with special hidden abilities. Admittedly, I hardly ever use the intro link or its features, and nowadays with Nintendo Wi-Fi being shut down for DS games, there's no way to check it out, so I'm just gonna skip over the rest of this one. However, the sequel games, Black 2 and White 2, would later add in a more traditional side career in the form of Pokestar Studios, or the not so subtly named Pokewood in the Japanese version. There are 11 different movie series and 40 movies total that the player can star in, using either rental Pokemon or Pokemon of their own. Depending on how the battles go or the lines the player chooses, you can earn one of three results. The good ending, which will unlock the next movie in the series, the bad ending, which will result in a loss of money at the box office, or a strange ending, which will shock the audience and result in higher money than usual. The more money your movies earn, the faster your star rank will go up, giving you more fans, including hilariously some Team Plasma grunts. At the highest rank, you get a level added to your trainer card, a bronze statue of the player, and access to the dressing room where you can witness many, many movie titles with Pokemon puns worked into them. What a fantastic reward. One would think that you'd get access to the costumes that you wore in the movies so you could use them outside the studio too, but alas, we'd have to wait another year for that feature to arrive. Pokestar Studios also allows you to act alongside other notable NPCs such as Roxy's father, ex-gym leader Bryson, and Sabrina from Kanto. A surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. Many of the films are references to real-life movies, involve fights against fake Pokemon-like creatures and robots, feature the player character speaking for the first time ever in the core series, and who could forget about the critically acclaimed Bryson Man series, consisting of Bryson Man, Bryson Man Strikes Back, Bryson Man Strikes Back 2, and Bryson Man Strikes Back Harder. 
We don't talk about the last one. It is a 20% Rotten Tomatoes for a reason. Yeah, Pokestar Studios is a very strange side event, albeit a very fun one. But hey, these are also the games with a romance subplot that involves calling the same person 15 times from specific spots on the map, so there's a lot of weird stuff in Black 2 and White 2. It can also be pretty tough to nail all the movies exactly the way you want to, since a lot of the scenarios rely on using specific Pokemon or just getting lucky with RNG, making it one of the harder side careers to fully complete. Sadly, the Kalos region would not feature a prominent side event or minigame of any kind, aside from the random jobs that you can take around Lumio City and the skating tricks that you can learn from various NPCs. It seems a little odd though, I always thought they were setting up for a side event that involves Rhyhorn racing since your mother is an accomplished racer, and there's even a Rhyhorn racing track that you can just barely see on Route 22, but other than just riding on Rhyhorn and a couple of other Pokemon across routes, not much amounted from this. Likewise, the Alola region didn't have a major side career of any kind to partake in, unless you count Pukumuku chucking on the beach. I mean, if that's your dream, go for it, I'm not shaming you or anything. Sure, there's Pokepelago, but I'd hesitate to call that a minigame or career, it's more like a stripped down version of Animal Crossing. The closest thing to a side event would probably be the Pokefinder minigame that you could use on Rotom decks, though the only valuable thing you get from it is a special stamp in your passport when you hit the max level. Again, this just feels like a watered down version of Pokemon Snap. And uh, oh yeah, you can Mantine Surf, that's pretty cool, right? I'm trying here guys, I really am. And in the Gala region, you can cook the curry? I guess that's a minigame. Well, better than nothing. Yeah, while minigames are very much still a thing that exists, the expansive side quests and careers of old were more or less phased out after Pokestar Studios in 2012. Which is a bit of a shame, it feels like they could have been so much more impressive in the 3D era. Like, yeah, we'll probably get contests back whenever Sinnoh Remix come out, but what about something new? Heck, I thought Pokeathlon would have worked great in the sports-themed gala region, it just seems like a missed opportunity for there to be nothing at all. I do think that these side careers helped a lot in establishing each region's unique identity, and at the end of the day, you at least had some kind of marker that proved that you put a lot of effort into it. I don't know, I'm sure some people agree would love to see these types of things make a return one day, but it's also pretty likely that this isn't something that comes across many fans' minds on a daily basis. Many of you probably didn't even notice their absence at all until watching this video. But anyhow, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit Hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this. We're still on the road to 100k subscribers, so any and all help is greatly appreciated. That's it for me. I'll see you guys next time.